so here I was, about to stab the sea in more ways than one, when I remembered my earlier and indoor screwing session. I was thankful for my barreled chest, which I got from some unknown deity by trading in my tattoo that I got while drunk one evening. I do not remember much, I was really drunk, but I do remember the officer that showed up. He took his job very seriously. He was so serious that even his noble steed was shocked at the amount of justice he exuded. After justice was administered upon me, the horse's caretaker had to gently escort the beast off of the premises. The equine was dead inside. She had seen some shit. Anyway, as part of my rehabilitation, I needed to fight a lower ranked nether beast, but I was restricted to inconvenient poses and no clothes. Well, the bare minimum. At least, I must have fucked up, because I woke up some time later in some kind of phallic elephant trunk tube surrounded by very tiny people. Perhaps I was the penis, and my sperm had gained sentience. Later, I was released by a crazy wizard, who explained that the tube had saved my life, but at the cost of my mortality. I was given a new mission. Travel through time, and do shit. I really have no idea what the last bit was, since I was too distracted by his fabulous eccentricity. After accepting my new lot in life, I was sent to an unknown future. I know it was the future because I had more clothes at my disposal. I was tasked with helping someone find her contact lenses, but before we even walked down one block, the crazy descendant of a crazy wizard came up behind us and shot a time portal behind me, sucking me into yet another time, leaving the myopic woman to fend for herself. I hope she found her contacts. The next time I found myself and saw me sitting in a sleek space vessel. The ride was nice, peaceful, and quiet. However, crazy the third appeared on a hallucinogenic vision in the window. I tried to ask him what my job was in this time period, but he simply stared into the infinity over my shoulder. Then I remembered. Space car is no sound. I crash landed on a desert planet some time later and, thinking fast, decided to create armor out of a nearby pile of bronze scraps. Unfortunately, I did not put many skill points into metalworking, so I gave up after the first spalder. I kept my underwear on since it was quite comfy, and gave me no wedges. Traveling across the planet yielded me much in the form of real clothes. I dropped my spalder onto a peculiar winged fellow, who did not take kindly to the now throbbing bump on their head. They approached me, and I quickly shuffled my feet on a convenient carpet, shooting bolts of static electricity at the fellow. Once defeated, I claimed my prize. Those magnificent wings. I repurposed them into a totally unnecessary cape that was charred on the edges from the electricity, you see, and proceeded to terrorize their neighbor, who was less than amused. He, however, did have another convenient rug, which I gladly used to the best of my ability. Sad to say, he was successful in knocking me out with the butt of his gun. I woke up to discover that I was back in space with two fragrant carrier fresheners hanging from the warp shift. The larger one smelled like old shampoo, and the smaller one smelled vaguely of a dog, whose fur had been soaked for a moment too long. Before me, I beheld the telltale beam of a virtual reality scenario. I gazed into the beam, and was rewarded with a wonderfully acted, and subtle piece about door-to-door -door salespeople. Once complete, the scenario shifted into advertising. I was presented with implausibility disguised as representation. Regardless, the poor sap was quite literally radiating with body odor that drove people around him to murder. He could not stop the murder, however, as he was stuck in an existential crisis about the odorizing spray. Thoroughly moved by this display of human suffering, I procured the deodorizing spray for myself. With one tiny press of a sprayer, I was transported into a world of pleasure. Unfortunately, since I was still connected to the virtual reality scenario, I could not actively participate, and was relegated to a voyeuristic position behind the pleasure. 
still, I was convinced that I could receive such pleasure for real. So I disconnected, and landed on the nearest planet, where I descended, and immediately sprayed myself. Two side effects were made immediate. First, the spray reacted with my outfit, and hardened it, making it similar in form to armor. Second, the spray reacted with the air, and turned into aphrodisiac snow. A coy smile on my face, I marched bravely into the nearest city to woo a lover. I was unsuccessful. Apparently, aphrodisiacs caused the inhabitants of this planet to go insane. I had no choice but to help the now bloodthirsty army. To end this feud quickly and efficiently, I tried to cast a summoning spell. I was successful in summoning a slightly higher ranked nether beast than I had fought some time ago, but it unfortunately had no brain to speak of. Its skull was a vacuous good out of which emerged the eater of brains and its minions. I casually removed the clothes that had served me well up until this point, for I knew that I would tolerate no hindrance. However, noticing that the eater of brains was finished eating, I decided to do yoga instead. This was a mistake, as the very ground I stood upon was yet another time portal. I fell through, catching my final scrap of clothing on a ledge as I fell and landed where I am now. This story is now complete up until my relative present, but it will not end any time soon.